Okay, if you didn't catch my video last week where I introduced the topic of hypernovas, you should probably go watch it now. But if you just like to make it up as you go along like I do, then let's ju just jump right in. Hypernova are, as the name suggests, they're like supernova, but even more so. These are explosions that are 10 to 100 times brighter than a typical supernova. These are incredibly intense explosions. Each one can outshine not one galaxy, not 10 galaxies, but up to 100 galaxies worth of stars. It's enough energy, enough energy is released in a single hypernova blast to give all of the world's electricity needs to meet those needs for a billion, billion, billion years. It's enough energy to completely and totally dismantle the sun atom by atom a hundred thousand times over. We are not messing around when it comes to hypernova. And last week I talked about one particular model that we think hypernova, what might cause hypernova, we call it the collapse arm model. And today I'm going to talk about a different potential mechanism. This is all theoretical. We're not exactly sure what launches hypernova, but we're doing our best. Give us a break. These are rare events. These are exotic events. They require a lot of physics. So give physicists and astronomers a little bit of slack here because it's hard. It's hard stuff. It's hard stuff. This particular model is called the pair instability model. And to understand what's happening with this mechanism, we have to look at giant stars again, you know, bigger than 40 times the mass of the sun, sometimes 100 times the mass of the sun, just giant star. In the core, you have gravity from the star trying to crush everything down. It's trying to make a black hole. It's trying to crush everything down as small as it possibly can. What's fighting that is the energy released from fusion reactions. And the energy released from fusion reactions comes in the form of high energy radiation. It comes in the form of gamma rays. And these gamma rays literally press up against the rest of the star. They're supporting the star. So you have these flood, this flood of photons, of gamma rays coming out, and they're literally knocking against atoms. All the molecules and atoms are trying to crush down, trying to squeeze and squeeze, and the, and the photons just keep propping it up, propping it up. That's normal everyday life of a star. But what can happen inside these most massive stars is that the gamma rays that are produced get to be a little bit too energetic. Energetic gamma rays can, just because they feel like it, spontaneously split into a pair of particles. They can become a proton, or sorry, an electron and a positron. You just, you just do it. It's like you got a gamma ray, and if it has enough energy, if it has enough energy, it can just split. Just next time you look, now you have a positron and an electron. The minimum energy you need is the mass of the two particles. You need at least that much energy in order for this to happen. So once you start producing high energy gamma rays, inside the core of a massive star, things can start to go haywire. These gamma rays can split apart. Normally, there's a balance where if there's a gamma ray splitting apart, the positron and an electron find each other. And when they do, they annihilate and they become a gamma ray again. And no one missed it. If it happens fast enough, no one really cares. No one really notices. But sometimes this balance can go out of whack. It can go out of whack if there's just like a sudden surge of energy, an extra fusion output, just like just all of a sudden there's a large flash of gamma rays, which this is a very unstable system, so it's bound to happen. They convert into positrons and electrons. And before the positrons and electrons have time to meet each other and annihilate and turn back into gamma rays, you know, if it's just it can all be over in a fraction of a second. Before they have time to meet again, gravity is not stopping. The star is always going to be trying to collapse, and then it just does. It's like the star gets kneecapped or hamstrung. It's just like, the, like imagine just like take grabbing the core of a star, the, the nuclear power core of the star, and just ripping its heart out. It just collapses instantly. 
just the whole entire star just whoo, releases a massive amount of energy, enough to potentially power a hypernova. Maybe, maybe not. We think this is a relatively convincing model. It's not the only candidate for hypernova out there. It could be that hypernova have several different ways of going off, and this is just one. More observations, upcoming surveys hope to capture instead of just a few hypernova a year, maybe like 100 hypernova a year. And so maybe in five to 10 years, we'll have enough hypernova, enough, enough data that we can sort out these models. But until then, we just have to be glad we don't live anywhere near one. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this week and uh, blowing stuff up with me, which is one of my favorite things to do, especially when it comes to stars. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter to see how you can keep these shows going. I really do appreciate it. But if not, then just, just give me a like or not. You know what? Just do whatever you want. 